My name is Michael, and I'll be taking you through the steps of flushing, completely flushing the transmission. This is a sealed transmission with no dipstick. Uh, it's a 2007 Lexus ES350. And the first thing you'll need to do is get this thing jacked up on a completely level uh, surface. So you can see I have jack stands and the support of wood blocks underneath. You'll need this car completely level for when you're finished flushing the transmission and you need to check the fluid to make sure the fluid is right and it's at the correct level. So that's the first step. The next thing you'll want to do is you want to take the pan down, which you probably already know that. There's the transmission pan. drain bolt, so you'll take the drain bolt out, the, a hex head, it's a 6 metric, um, once you take that drain bolt out, there's a secondary um, tube, and that holds uh, the rest of the fluid that's in the pan, so the, this first bolt take out all excess fluid out of the pan, and that's what you use to check the transmission fluid. I'll show you toward the end of this video. But right now you want to take both of them out because you just want to drain as much fluid as possible out of this pan. So you'll use the same hex head 6 metric to take out the, the secondary drain, which is um, just beyond this drain plug. So you take out the first one and then there's a second one in there that's hand tight. And it's hand tight for a reason because it strips out easily. Once you finish with the, the draining and you take the, the pan down, um, you get the new filter on there and you clean it out and then you put it back on you already know how to put it back on. Um, what you'll do is you'll fill it up. So I've got a 15 sixteenths um, ratchet here. And this is why I took the tire off. So this bolt right here is the fill is the fill bolt. And you need a 15 sixteenths to get it out of there. Once you loosen that you you can fill your clean pan with fresh ATF, um, and for this specific vehicle, I'm using the best product out there, which is the fuel efficient ATF. It's also known as ATL, Automatic Transmission Light. Amsoil sells two different types of transmission fluids, and that's one of them. As you can see, I only use the best products. I got the rotor here, which is aftermarket rotor. So after you fill that with new fluid, um, on this specific car, it's going to be about five quarts total. So you'll you'll take about four quarts out of the pan itself, and then once you take the filter down, about another quart will drip out of there. So once you finish that looking from the front of the car um, you'll have the new fluid in the pan, the pan's clean you'll want to disconnect this hose that goes into the transmission so the hose coming out that's feeding the radiator cycles through the radiator to cool the ATF down and then this hose right here that you see goes back into the transmission this is the passenger side and this hose right here is, is sh it's shooting back, it actually loops around underneath and it comes out of the transmission, it goes to the center, it goes toward the center of the radiator, you can't quite see it, right there, it goes, it goes into the radiator and then Right here is where 
the transmission fluid comes back out of the radiator and it goes into as I showed you it goes into the back into the the pan so when it comes out of its torque converter it goes into this hose goes through the radiator cycles through and it comes back cooler uh, in temperature it goes back into the the pan right here and once it once it gets into the pan the filter can suck it up back into the transmission so you'll disconnect that it'll, it'll be a little it'll drip, drip and whatnot but um, once you disconnect that you just set it up so that it's pointing into this into your drain pan which my drain pan says I can go up to six quarts it's a as markings on the side so level out your pan and you and you know how much is coming out um, once you once you have this disconnected and pointed towards your drain pan you'll go over and you probably add about you could do it in like two quart cycles so what I got is a long neck funnel or a pump uh, I used the pump last time it's just hard to keep clean and all that so I went and I got a funnel a long neck funnel which I'm trying to keep clean um, and so since it's kind of an odd setup, you can see that this long neck funnel is going to help a lot when I want to get the fluid in the transmission. So what what I did was I added about um, I added about two quarts. So I I started adding it. Then I had someone start the engine for me, and as soon as the engine starts, just um, about maybe five second delay there'll be automatic transmission fluid coming out of the hose that you just connected and it'll be shooting into that pan. Um, once that pan fills up to about two quarts, kill your engine and wait till you finish filling two quarts of new fluid back into the transmission. Because all you're doing is you're adding the transmission fluid into the pan instead of the, the hose adding it. So you disconnect the hose, all the old fluid goes into the pan. The new fluid you're pouring in. So that's part of your transmission flush. Once that transmission fluid comes out it comes out clean, you'll just finish your two quart cycle or whatever. And then you'll reconnect it to the hose back into the transmission. Make sure you put the hose clamp back on it. And then you'll add probably an additional quart of transmission fluid to your transmission pan. Um, an additional quart from what you took out of there. So you'll probably end up taking out uh, five quarts or so out of the pan itself. And about another four quarts um, that, come, that come out of that hose. So you'll want some additional fluid in there for when you go to check the transmission fluid temperature um, and that system that I was talking about earlier of the two drain plugs this first drain plug it's all it does is drain out excess fluid so what you do is you get the transmission running at the right temperature and you can see I've got a scan gauge here this is accurate so it says 105 right now because I don't have the I don't have the ignition on so it's not reading correctly um, that's what it last was when it shut off so between the scan gauge and the infrared thermometer okay so I see a lot of guys using the infrared thermometer um, it's accurate for about the first five minutes or so as your temperature is climbing right now the temperature is 50 degrees outside and or it's probably about 60 now 62 um, so 
it's accurate until all of a sudden your heat starts it starts jumping up and then the heat is not transferring fast enough through this metal so if you do use infrared you're probably going to want to shoot it into the side of the transmission this is reading 93 right now and that will give you your most accurate um, with the infrared but it's probably about within 15 degrees so um, it's not that accurate and you want to be checking your transmission fluid temperature on this car at exactly 104 degrees so what you do is when you got that extra quart of fluid in there you start up the car and you let it idle until this thing the scan gauge which you'll have to it was kind of a pain but I had to program it specifically for this car and for reading transmission fluid temperature so I I named it ATL, which is um, it's the AMS oil name for it, automatic transmission light. Um, so when that temperature, which is, it'll probably take a while to climb if it's 50 degrees, while when you're doing it, um, when it gets to 104 degrees, you take this and you unscrew it and all excess fluid comes out if there is no excess fluid coming out that means you need to kill the vehicle and then add more ATF um, once you add more ATF you can start up the engine again run it to 104 degrees and then see if any fluid comes out and if there, if there is fluid that comes out wait till it starts dripping and screw it back in because the, fl the fluid is, the fluid temperature is constantly rising, and as it rises, it expands, so more fluid and more fluid will come out. So don't let it drain all the way. Just as soon as it starts dripping, screw it back in. Um, there's, what happens is there's a, a tube under this. So you unscrew this, and then inside of that, there's a tube that goes up about uh, two inches, per se and it holds fluid at whatever whatever it stands at so the fluid only comes and goes into the tube if there's too much of it if you if you have the right amount um, which you'll probably want too much to start with and so that way some comes out so you know there's the right amount otherwise it'd be hard to tell whether there's the right amount or not uh, so once you once you drain the first one, you unscrew this, let it drip, I mean, let it pour. Once it starts dripping, screw it back in. You're good. Your transmission fluid is, is perfectly uh, at the place where, where the manufacturer um, specified. Uh, so, that being said, your car needs to be level to get that right transmission fluid. Um, level and that is the the main thing um, that one of the biggest steps and problems I had was checking this transmission fluid because of the having to get the scan gauge and hooking it up to the computer and that was just it took a lot of time this this whole process probably took me about six hours so when you get into it, you don't want to stop, so I try and have everything ready. Get your get all your all your tools, whatever you'll need. I had to use a, a metric hex head to for the uh, the drain plug, and then also for the little tube that was um, that's beyond the drain plug, which lets all the fluid out of the pan. That's also a six metric hex head. And then a 15 16 for this bolt here. This fill, fill bolt on the side of the transmission. That's why I had to take the tire off. And I'm not exactly sure what the metric uh, number is for a 15 16 But a 15 16 fits tightly, so that's what I used. Um, Lucas Stop Leak. 
um, is what I used for sealing the, the gasket, the rubber gasket right here um, in between the transmission and the pan. There's a rubber gasket and it just moves all over the place. So I sealed, um, I put the, the Lucas, because it's like molasses, I put it around the outside and and then when it, it the gasket stuck, I kind of pre-screwed the bolts into the gasket, the rubber gasket holes. So like 18 bolts all the way around the pan. I just screwed them in just a little bit each and so all the bolts were holding the gasket and the gasket was holding the bolts. So I just had to slide the pan right into place and then just hand tighten each one of those bolts. And that will that that's all you need to know to get the the complete flush um using the best type of fluid out there and getting the perfect level and the peace of mind. So, um, using this ATF, you probably don't need to do another flush for 100,000 miles, this stuff's so good. Um, but I'll leave that up to you and I'll get off of here so you can get to work.